we ran into a guy outside, and he was a homeless kid. Yeah, I think he was homeless. We're not positive, but he he was excited that we were playing, and he told us he played bongos, and we said, "Hey, go get your bongos," because tonight, you know, doesn't really matter what happens. And he did. He went home or wherever he keeps his bongos, and he brought them back, and it kind of turned into one of the best shows because we played with this old man on bongos. Your love is like a heart attack, knocking me up my feet. I'm getting up again. Your love is like a heart attack. It's going beep, 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 beep on the screen. Hello, welcome to Three Gigs, the podcast that tells the stories of three shows that have had a profound effect on the performer's life and career. The very first show, their best show, and their worst show. I'm your host, Dominic Davy, and today my guest is Bella Novella. This episode of Three Gigs is brought to you by FreshCleanTees.com. It works like a shave club, but they send you t-shirts, super awesome t-shirts. And they have a special offer for all the listeners of Three Gigs. Save 20% off your first order by going to FreshCleanTees.com and entering the coupon code GIG at checkout. That's FreshCleanTees.com with offer code G-I-G. Novella featuring Jania McClure on drums, Jacob Heath on guitar, and Jackie Laws on keyboards and vocals have been making waves with their dynamic, high-energy, 80s-style guitar rock power pop. In fact, Music Fest goers will see them in this year's South by Southwest, along with a Texas run of shows in March, and they'll be working on a brand new album that they hope to come out later this year. I first heard about them when they headlined a show put on by a friend of mine, and I actually saw a live stream of them appear on my Facebook feed, and I kind of immediately fell in love with this band. I mean, seriously, guys, this is why I get mad at people when they say there's not any new music out there. There's lots of new music. It's literally under your guys' nose. You just have to look through the clutter to find the gems. And for me, this band is one I just fell in love with right away. I'm not, I haven't even seen them live. I just really like their music. Well, I guess I saw him live on the live stream, but you know what I mean. It doesn't count. I'm just, no, I just knew when I saw them, I had to talk to them and find out more about their stories. And thankfully, they were nice enough to agree to take some time out before they played a show that night to tell me a few stories, starting with their very first show ever. You know, we, we talked about it, and our first show as this band, we kind of can't remember it. We know where it was, but... It was, I'm sure it was fun, but it was pretty uneventful. But we all have, I would say, like our more, uh, our more interesting stories would be our very first shows as musicians or first time playing in a band. Yeah. And uh, so I don't know if that's okay that's for you, but totally okay. Okay, you guys should go first. What's your, you have a good one? Oh, well, Jackie and I didn't know this about each other, but we, uh, just talked about our very first show i think i was like 15 or 16 maybe and uh we both were playing acoustic guitar with another girl who was also playing acoustic guitar and we did the whole entire the entire whole album live through this (laughs) and then uh jackie (laughs) i did i did indigo girl galileo with another girl which (laughs) i don't know if we were (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> fully aware of what the Indigo Girls were back in the nineties, but <laughs> yeah, but yeah, in the wow. middle of in the middle of doll parts, it was like an open mic night at a at Paradise Grill and Bar in Tallahassee, Florida, which is where Jake and I are from. Oh, okay. um, we we were we played, you know, like I don't know nine whole songs, and then in the middle of some song, probably doll parts, uh, my friend forgot the lyrics and just like ran off stage crying, and I had to run and comfort her. Oh so no. That was my, yeah. <laughs> uh, but it, was, it was fun. Um, everybody was impressed that they that we could play guitar because I think you know we were both super shy and no one ever knew that we played instruments or did anything cool. But Jake's uh, Jake's first show was at a high, at our high school. We went to the same high school. Oh, yeah, right. I was I was 
I was about 15, and uh, we had a thing uh, every year on April Fool's Day. They would they would do an event at the school called Fool's Jam, and anyone who was in a band would perform during during all the lunch periods down in like a big outside pit with these huge stairs all around. So all the kids would sit on the stairs, and it was you know super intimidating if you're at the bottom of that looking up at every kid you know. But I uh, I had some friends, and I think we were we were covering like a Metallica song or something. And oh yeah, I, well we have VHS of this, so. Uh, and I saw one of my older brother's friends right before we played. And he said, when you start playing, I'm going to hit you in the face with a tomato. <laughs> and so the whole time I'm playing, I'm just sweating and waiting to get nailed in the face with a tomato, but it, it never came. So it worked out. Okay. That's a hazing. That's a hazing right there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but it worked out. So if I could get through that, then the rest are easy. Well, okay. So. Two down now, we have a show that ends with somebody running off stage in tears and having to comfort them. I'm sure the crowd was like, wow, that was really intense. Like, they really felt those songs. <laughs> and then we have you like in, in mortal fear of being hit with a tomato. <laughs> yeah. Wow. I think Jackie's is the one that went well. Yeah, Jackie's went well, right? I was yeah, just... I mean, you, you can't get wrong with the Indigo Girls, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> You, you can't know. remember the. Remember if you won the. It was like a, a talent show, right? Yeah, someone else won. Yeah. The, the Disney person always wins the talent show. She got oh, through it. Oh so that... yeah. <laughs> you know, they just couldn't handle it. They couldn't handle the the depth that you were that you were bringing. Well, right. Should... They weren't. <laughs> <laughs> At least you didn't get hit with a tomato, or thought you were getting hit with a tomato, and at least nobody ran off in tears. So there you go. That's a success. <laughs> that is a success. Okay. All right. So if those are your first shows, and I and I do like that you can't remember a very that your first show as a band was very uneventful, and you're like, yeah, I don't remember, whatever. Uh, so <laughs> I'm, I'm sure we were nervous, you know, first time playing with this band. I'm sure we were really nervous and just sweating our way through it. But I, I think we got through it okay. And we, I think, was it at Alex's that we yeah. played? Oh, yeah. Well, was it Alex's Bar in Long Beach, which is... Oh, yeah, yeah. I played Alex's. Great. Oh, okay, yeah. So you know, you're familiar with it. Yeah. It's, it was Fantasia from True Blood. Yeah. yeah. That's actually... The, 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 <laughs> the women in my band were, like... <laughs> didn't know that. Walked in, and Oubliette, our keyboard player, was like... This is, is this... Are we... Is this True Blood? Yeah. What the... <laughs> What the hell? Like, she was like, "What the, what the shit?" Like she like freaks out. It was awesome. Oh, that's so funny. Yeah, they. Uh, I think. Uh, well, because Jackie used to work there a long time ago, and she. I didn't even. We didn't know this, but I think you didn't. You invite us on the the day, the very first scene in True Blood, where like they yeah, show well, Eric. It in it. Yeah, Jackie yeah. and her and her husband and everybody. There's there's like a bunch of uh, friends that are extras in the background and does that scene and we all play fang bangers. Yeah, you're all fang bangers. <laughs> I know the no, that's scene. A, that's awesome. Uh, <laughs> that's hilarious. Yeah. See, I'm gonna say it since we brought it up. You know, True Blood. They really should have switched the casting of uh, Eric and uh, what's his name, Bill. I think they, the act, I yeah. think they got the yeah. actors wrong. I think the actor who played Eric should have been Bill, and the guy who played Bill should have been Eric. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I've never, I've never thought that before, but that kind of, I think that would may have worked better. Yeah, I, I hated, I the, how that actor would say "sucky," like that drove me crazy every time. I, I, just, I don't know if you could hear it. She just did that too. Yes. Oh come on, sucky! Like it's like, oh okay. please, for God, God's sake, stop saying her name. Just. And then, and then he was supposed to be like thirty. Like, what was he supposed to be like thirty or something? I was like, he, that actor is nowhere near thirty. That man yeah. is deep into forties. Yeah, but they, uh, I guess, after the first season, it was too expensive for them to keep filming at Alex's, so they built a replica stage, like on a sound stage somewhere. And we, Jake and I, w- would watch the show, and we had no idea because we just it looked exactly the same. So we just thought they were still filming there. But Jackie told us that. Uh, she was like, you can't, can't you tell that it's way cleaner and way nicer than actual Alice's? So, <laughs> the floor, the floor, the floor I guess the floors are shinier. and uh, The floors are the giveaway. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. But, uh, yeah, so I guess the rest, like, from season two to the end of the show, it looks like Alex's, but it's actually not. <laughs> well, I like that it was cheaper to actually build Alex's than it was to go to Alex's. That's something. Yeah, that place is also in the Tenacious D movie, right? Mm-hmm. Where yeah. they... We're like, is it Dave Grohl in that scene? Yeah. Where, yeah. Anyway, it's a fun place. But our first show was there, but we don't remember anything about it. <laughs> I like, I like how that that I story wound Thursday. around. Okay, that's why we don't remember. It was a Thursday night at Alex's bar in the big cavernous Alex's bar. Yeah, uh, that's funny. Uh, no, I've I've played and played uh, my share of Thursday nights to large, dark, cavernous places. <laughs> yeah. so okay all right well those are great stories uh that's awesome um what would you guys say would be one of their best shows of all time hmm well the two that pop into my mind are we played long beach pride a few years ago and we got to open for salt and Peppa, which was <laughs> say no more amazing because, uh yeah we got to open for salt and Peppa and um we got i remember afterwards we got to sit in the vip section and, the, and i was like i've made it i get i'm in like the third row of salt and peace and it was or i guess we're in the first row yeah um but that show was great because they had um a few weeks before the show they asked us to send all of our lyrics for all of our songs that we were going to play and uh they had two sign language interpreters learn all the lyrics to our songs and then so when we play we play on this giant stage uh, on both sides of the stage, there were two guys acting out all of the words with sign language. And it was super <laughs> fun for me because I just watched them the whole time and smiled and laughed because it was amazing just to see because they were dancing while they were doing it. Yeah, they, don't, they don't just sign it. They sell it. They they had like <laughs> dance moves and, you know. <laughs> That's we, amazing. The, one of our songs, the, the Archer S, you know, they were doing the full yeah, the, the, the chorus of Archer S is like, is, you know, it's all about archery so they were actually like pulling back an invisible arrow and shooting it and stuff and and then uh then when it was done some older guy told me i did a great job and i found out that it was the bass player from the neck and so that was kind of exciting so every oh, time i hear fun. my sharona now i think that guy likes me <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome i i, I uh, but that that must have been rad you had two sign language go-go dancers that's awesome yeah. yeah, yeah. I wish we could have that at every show. And they were, <laughs> and they were dudes. The That'd be better. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that would be. Um, but that was a great one. And usually, the best shows that we've played, I think, have been like Long Beach Community kind of arts festival type music festival things that like the city put on. Um, another one we played a Long Beach Zombie Walk. And they were trying to break the Guinness Book of World Records for most people doing the Michael Jackson Thriller dance at the same time. So they, uh, right in front of our stage, right before we played, like as far as our eyes could see, it was probably like 300 people all doing the Michael Jackson Thriller dance. And that was amazing. And then we played right afterwards. And so that was really fun. (laughs) That's awesome. That's so great. Oh, this is, yeah. th- these are like, I like how like your show, like your favorite shows are, are very, the best shows are very lighthearted and fun, like just super fun. And that's kind of what I get from your guys's band. That's what I sort of draw in. Like you put a lot of intensity into your guys's playing. It's very precise. It's incredibly catchy. It's, but it's very, very fun. You guys are, it sounds like you guys kill it. Like, yeah, thanks. Yeah, we. Yeah. I mean, we're all friends. We, I think we were, uh, well, Jake and I have known each other since high school, and then we were friends with Jackie for years and years before we played in a band with her. So it's just fun to play in bands with people you like. <laughs> I feel like, these, you know, there's not, a, there's not a ton of money in rock and roll these days. So if you're not doing it for fun, then what's the point, you know? What's so point? We, just, yeah. we do it because we enjoy doing it. So That's yeah. awesome. No, and it shows. It shows. Like, that's kind of a big thing for me when it comes to bands that I just – I, I don't know. I'm all about like, do I believe this? Is it, is this, yeah. does this matter to you? Does this matter? Cause if it doesn't matter to you, why is it supposed to matter to me? Like, am I, am I, when I watch you, are you really like feeling these notes and feeling this performance and you're really in it? And are you really loving this? Um, yeah. Yeah. It's important. And it's also kind of like, you know, I don't know how cool what we're doing is, you know, like our kind of retro, 
guitar heavy 80s heavy sort of sound but you know it's like i don't think the kids are into that sound these days but that's what we like and that's what speaks to us and so that's why we just keep doing it even if it might not be within or whatever you know, I just read an article also by Quincy Jones. I don't know if you saw it. He had this crazy article where he said all sorts of all sorts of crazy things, and it was kind of yeah, amazing. Some of those were pretty some pretty shocking allegations. <laughs> he was throwing it. He was throwing down truth, and he had no yeah. problem t- saying whatever the hell he wanted. But one of the things that I I really loved, well, I loved all of it. But like one of the things that I I was really it was really struck me was where he said they asked him like what did he make the most money off of or and he was like you know i never did anything for money i did it because i i love it i love music i want to make music i want to create to innovate and to push the boundaries he's like i did it for me i did it anything i did like there were projects that made more money than others but like some that were really successful but he's like i i everything i did was i never did anything based off oh this is what i'm going to make he's just trying to make stuff you know yeah they made some great stuff. That's that's how we feel. I mean, if you know, we just figure if we're not doing this, we'd be sitting at home watching Netflix or, you know. So <laughs> as long as we enjoy doing it, we're keep doing it. Right. No, that's awesome. Uh, well, it sounds like it. I mean, it looks like fun. What I've seen, and then uh, sounds like fun, and then these shows sound kind of awesome. I do think you guys should really consider. Two hot pants wearing dudes and go 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 dancers sign language, uh, give you know translating your songs in sign language for every show. Like, if you if you know any, send them our way because we would love that. <laughs> I'll try I'll try and find the right. They, they gotta have sweet abs though. You can't just can't just have anybody up there. They gotta have sweet abs. So yeah. <laughs> keep that in mind. <laughs> all right. Okay. All right. So now we've heard the first shows. We've heard the best shows. Now, what, was, <laughs> what about some of the worst shows? What was the shows that made you guys go, dear God, why am I doing this to myself? What What's going <laughs> well, on? Well, I'll, I'll start. The first one that popped in my head was uh, we were on tour a few years ago, and we it was during, it was I think, January, and we went through, I think we played Tahoe uh, one night, and on our after the show, on the way back to the room, uh, Jackie slipped on, I mean, the, the roads were just ice, frozen ice. And she slipped and fell and uh, did you break your tailbone or? No, I butt grandma myself. <laughs> <laughs> so we, yeah, we had to refer to her as butt grandma for the rest of the tour because she couldn't move. She, nothing could touch her butt. Uh, <laughs> but we had a show the next night in <laughs> Reno that we kind of threw on at the last minute and it was opening for a burlesque show at some you know, dive bar in Reno. So we showed up and Jackie, you know, the singer can't even bend over to plug cables in. Like she's basically unable to move. And there's hardly anyone there except for a bunch of like 60 year old men who are only there to see burlesque. They have no interest in seeing a band. And, uh, and we played and, you know, it was fine. It, it wasn't, it wasn't great, but, then the burlesque show happened, and it was just a disaster. A disaster. <laughs> I mean, it was fun, but I would say it was probably one of our, definitely one of our worst shows. Yeah, every time I looked up when we were playing, I just saw dudes looking at their phones because just like one single dude on a, at a table by himself looking at his phone because we had clothes on, so we had nothing to offer yeah. him. So it was just oh like, my God. what are we doing playing this show? <laughs> And then when it, when it came time, at, you know, after the show, they were like, hey, guys, we don't really have any money for you, but we can smoke you out if you want. So that was what they offered in payment. But <laughs> And none of us smoked pot. We were just like, no, thanks. We're yeah, good. Like, we're shit. Good. <laughs> oh, that's, yeah, that would be me. I'd be like, oh, crap. Well, that's, thanks anyway. I, I did get paid once we played a show, a bar in the middle of uh, Eugene, Oregon. Nobody showed up because they forgot to promote it. So afterwards, yeah. the oh. yeah, and we had a we had a draw, so we expected like it was going to be decent, and it it was not. Uh, there was no one there, and so the the manager was like, "This is all my fault. I'm so sorry. Here's how I can I don't have we didn't make any money. I don't have anything to give you. So here's what I'm going to do." I was like, "So she brings out us all these shot glasses, 
and then she pours <laughs> she brings out this bottle of sake and in the <laughs> sake is a is a de, is a petrif a pickled like pit viper snake coiled oh. in it oh, oh that's thai wine thai okay she told yeah, me it was sake she said it was like super like, expensive yeah it probably is yeah with the full snake in it i've seen that on tv or i've read about it but i've never never tried it so oh. that's thai wine that's what they actually gave me because i they like, said sake and i think all right yeah, thai, like it's a thai it's, it's a thai specialty like a delicacy, it's a delicacy. Right? Yeah. Oh man, do you remember what happened the rest of the night? Yeah, did you get drunk from it? Uh, spoiler alert: like I don't drink a lot, but when I do, I can handle my shit. But it was definitely amazing. Uh, it was definitely strong. They, she said, if like we if we kept drinking it, we would we would. It, it was it was strong. It was great. But we only they didn't. <laughs> she didn't give us the bottle. She just gave us like a couple shots, and that was it. And I was like, all right, well, I'll let her take what we can get, but. <laughs> definitely sometimes the most gotta drink. what was it sometimes you just gotta drink snake juice after some, some, show and that's yes. all you get <laughs> sometimes all you get is snake juice sometimes they offer to smoke you out and it's useless right. um, oh, man. <laughs> but, well yeah we I mean, my my worst show by far I, I'm gonna make this I'll tell you the short version because I could go on and on about it but basically <laughs> For some stupid reason, when we were on a tour through the Southwest and we were in Vegas, I decided to experiment with edibles yeah. right before. I mean, I had a headache. Yeah. I don't know why. I'm, like, way too old to be trying new drugs, and especially, you know, like, right before something important. And because uh, we had played a show the night before, and they made us play for three hours, and we're not in three-hour set shape, you know. We kind of usually have, like, 45 minutes, one-hour sets, and so... I just had a really bad headache and I was sore and you know, the, my, our friend had a, a, some homemade Jolly Ranchers that were in this freezer and I don't know what I was thinking, but I tried one and just lost my mind, played the worst show of my life. Uh, I think Jackie also lost her mind and wore yoga pants on stage and uh, <laughs> like didn't even put shoes on. So I was just like trying to hang on while I was, you know, seeing the beginnings of face and time and uh jackie's wearing yoga pants and uh it was just a disaster to, i was trying to cover for everyone and, and say that we all had the flu so <laughs> yeah. get the crowd support but uh they believe it or not so what was extra terrible about playing a terrible show was this guy in vegas who comes to all of our shows in vegas had brought like it was his cousin's birthday or something and he brought like his entire family and he's like oh sam's great and he came and that was i think that was our worst oh and my dad my dad had recently reconnected with a friend from Vietnam, like, you know, a long time ago on Facebook. And that guy had contacted my dad and my dad was like, yeah, my daughter's in a band. You should go see her. She's playing in Vegas. And so that guy came and saw, I mean, I think that one out of every show we've ever played out of the hundreds of shows was the Probably one that worse. sounded the worst, yeah. you know, like where none of us were playing the right parts or anything because we were just out of our minds. So, uh, yeah, that was just all that was terrible but that was my worst show <laughs> wow i i like the that your worst show like you're 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 tripping <laughs> there's are you sure you didn't hallucinate the yoga pants or were the yoga pants like so <laughs> no they were real they were real you're like, <laughs> you're like I'm sorry, I'm not dressing up for this show and i feel like in my mind i just see jacob going i just came to play a show um I we're, oh, yeah. <laughs> we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna try and play another song now uh see yeah. how this goes yeah it was rough and then a couple of people came and were like good show afterwards and i thought what is wrong with like, you the bar is low yeah is yeah low. you gotta raise the bar man yeah it was rough uh but i completely sobered up as soon as it was over so i probably should have just like ran laps in the parking lot yeah. and i would have been a lot better but yeah. we have pictures of that night jake took a picture of me behind my drum they're on our instagram if you go back a few years uh well what, what happened was we were at a casino that's the problem with vegas shows is that you got time to kill before the show and then you end up going to the casino and then things get crazy drinks everywhere there's free drinks everywhere and then there's just like a friend with jolly ranchers in their fridge but jackie took a picture with 
uh, you, I think you were calling him jail Corey Feldman because he, like he looked just like Corey Feldman if he had spent some time in prison. And uh, then, yeah, I don't know. I think We haven't been back to Vegas since. Well, we can leave it at that. We, yeah. uh, we said we need a break for a while. Let's, like, <laughs> let's reevaluate before we do that again. Uh, we'll make it back eventually. But... Like Vegas, it's, it's not you, it's us. We'll be back. This... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Well, I mean, that's a hell of a show. There you go. Okay, do no we have a, do we have a third? Any of us. Oh, I don't know. I mean, we we played a lot of shows with nobody. <laughs> Jackie just mentioned uh we did a show in LA at an art space and it was I don't think it got promoted at all. It was kind of we get there and like there was wet paint all over the floor and I don't think anyone knew we were even going to be there. And it was just like puddles of water that were close to our uh, yeah, we, equipment. Yeah, and... we thought we might get electrocuted. But we ran into a guy outside, and he was... Homeless, dude. Yeah, I think he was homeless. We're not positive, but he, he was excited that we were playing. And he told us he played bongos. And we said, hey, go get your bongos. Because tonight, you know, it doesn't really matter what happens. <laughs> and he did. He went home or wherever he keeps his bongos. <laughs> and he brought them back. And it kind of turned into one of the best shows because we played with this old man on bongos, and we didn't get electrocuted. We didn't get electrocuted. That was good. We played to three people. And we played to about three people, yeah. So that was that's got to be in the bottom five for sure. <laughs> yeah, still, it's pretty cool, you know. Like, all right, man, this is your moment. Get your bongos. <laughs> you are now yeah. the fourth yeah. member. Let's do this. <laughs> yeah. And, and you know what? He knew what he was doing. He wasn't. He he wasn't an amateur. He was uh, he made him sound pretty good. You've been listening to Bella Novella. They will actually be heading to Texas in March, starting with Lola's in Fort Worth on the 14th. And then they're following that up with a three-day Austin residency at the Downtown Weston Hotel Rooftop Bar during South by Southwest. You can actually find out all about that and a lot more at their website at bellanovella.com. I hope you've enjoyed the episode. Be sure to check out some of our other episodes. We've collected some really great stories from amazing performers. And actually be sure to check out our website, 3 gigspodcastcom for extras and footage of all of our guests, including Bella Novella. You can find us on all of the social medias. Just search for 3 Gigs Podcast. You can't miss us. And if you le- do use iTunes, take a moment. And if you're enjoying the show, give us a rating and a review on our iTunes podcast page. Just search us in the store. You can't miss us there either. Uh, the more reviews and ratings we get, the more people we reach. And I really appreciate that. Today's theme was Telemetry, off of the album of the same name by Bella Novella, and we're closing with Archers, off the album of that same name, also by Bella Novella. Both albums are available now. My name is Dominic Davi, and this has been 3 Gigs. Thank you so much for listening, and I'll see you next time. It is true, it is true.